Hello everyone, welcome to another battle report for my channel. Uh, today we have battle report number 21. This is a 1500 point game, Dwarves versus Twilightkin, and the scenario is loot. So, this is the first game of a three game tournament um, hosted by the Outlanders, a gaming group out of Omaha, Nebraska. This was the Warhammer Refugee Tournament. So we go into my list. It is not terribly different from my last reports, but a little bit. Uh, players, I'm playing dwarves. Uh, to start, we take the bulwarkers regiment with a brew of strength, a troop of ironclad, two troops of rangers, one horde of shield breakers with the brew of sharpness, one horde of earth elementals with the blessing of the gods, an army standard bearer with the boomstick, a ranger captain with the wings of honey maze. Stone Priest with the Bane Chant upgrade and one Greater Earth Elemental. For the Twilight Kin, we have two regiments of Buccaneers, one regiment of Reaper Guard, one regiment of Dark Knights, two troops of Heralds of Woe, one Dark Avenger with Pegasus, one Dark Lord on Battle Dragon, one High Priestess of the Abyss and one army standard bearer. Um, I got his list here and he doesn't have any upgrades or magic items that I'm aware of. So um, this is my opponent's army on his display board. This tournament didn't require display boards. It was mostly just like a, hey guys, bring something to carry your army around on. So we'll go into deployment. Um, like I said, this is loot. There is a river running down the middle of this board. So on his far left, Heralds of Woe, Pegasus, Rider, uh, Knights, and the uh, Dark Lord on a Dragon. On his right, his left, my right, um, Buccaneers, then the uh, Reaper Guard in the middle of the another Buccaneers, and then the Army Standard Bearer and High Priestess with them, and then way on the other side, the Herald of Woe. Um, this is also after Vanguard. As you can see, my uh, ranger captain has has flown way ahead. Um, I'm pointing out here, there is where my ranger captain started. So um, so we can go from left to right here. For me, it is the uh, Horde of Earth Elementals, Greater Earth Elemental. The Stone Priest is behind him as he always is. A, I put one of the troop of rangers over here this time. A Horde of Shield Breakers. Uh, the troop of ironclad in front of the horde of shield breakers, the army standard bearer with the boomstick next to them, and then the bulwarkers. And finishing it off, I had a vanguarded troop of rangers all the way over here. So we can see the overview of the board, how everything looks. Um, so you can see there's a river in the middle. We are counting the river as um, uh, d dangerous, no, you know, um, just standard um, uh, difficult terrain. Um, the hills are all like height two or something, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter. And then that lake way on the other side is impassable as well as the house and the uh, small tower thing. Um, so I'm just showing how I vanguarded over here, which I already discussed. But anyway, we go to turn one. Um, turn one goes, and I think as in every game this this uh, tournament, I I don't get a pick who goes first. So my opponent decides I should go. No, I probably would have picked to have gone first, but we'll see. I think so. This is funny. So, uh, everything moves up, um, more or less, not super aggressively. And that's about it for movement. Uh, we jump right into shooting, and the rangers over here shoot and waver this Herald of Woe unit. Um, I think the boomstick and the rangers shoot this uh, buccaneer guy over here. And in combat, my ranger captain had charged these Herald of Woe way over here. And did a couple of damage and just bounced off. So... The overview after dwarf turn one looks like such. Um, nothing, nothing really going too hard through my mind here. I know I can probably take those. You can see the tokens are all way on the one side of the board. Um, I know that I can probably get two of these tokens at this point, um, maybe three, and then just hope that you know my opponent doesn't doesn't get one. You know, essentially the middle one is the one I'm worried about. <laughs> Um, the, or the, the top one here is the one I'm worried about, the middle one I think I can take, and the bottom one I'm not so concerned that anyone can even get at this point. So we move into Twilight Kin turn one. Um, 
You can see he crashed his Pegasus into my Rangers, which is fine with me because he had to land in the river to do that. Um, his dragon flies over the river. His knights move up. Over here, he just moves up uh, cautiously um, since he has a little bit more range than me and he's also faster, so no reason to give me the charges. Um, and his herald of woe, since I damaged them, they can't shoot me. They had to charge my ranger captain um, up top. <clears throat> yeah, we move into shooting and it's, it, Buccaneers have throwing weapons and he has a fireball. So, <clears throat> excuse me. A uh, little damage done to my bull workers here. Um, nothing too bad. And then in a combat, the uh, the uh, Pegasus Rider. I guess it wouldn't say the Pegasus Rider whiffs. I'm looking at this. The Pegasus Rider only has three attacks. And it's going to be hitting on fours because he landed in the river. So I'm not I'm not surprised he only does one, but he bounces. Uh, these guys do two damage and they bounce. So that's what it looks like at the end of turn one. I'm not stuck in too much, just doing some positioning. So we move into turn two for dwarves. Dwarves turn two. Sorry for the blurry pictures. Um, my elementals both toe up essentially into the river a little bit there. Just getting ready. Um, my ironclad moves up um, to essentially just be a sacrificial unit, but also to, he still has kind of to toe it, step into the river to get me. My bulwarkers reform um, to face the dragon and knights on this side. Um, and you can see my ironclad or my my shield breakers have also reformed to um, expect the uh, the heavy push from that side. Uh, for the for the most part, I think my elementals are gonna actually probably handle the middle not that badly. I, I I'm not that concerned about those buccaneers or those reaper guard. Honestly, those those defense six elementals are just gonna chew them up. Um, so I, I I'm essentially just allocating the rest of my dwarves for this other side. Uh, the bottom, my rangers countercharge the Pegasus. So we move into shooting. Uh, probably the boomstick or something just shoots these guys. Nothing special. Um, these guys only do one point of damage to the Pegasus, uh, which is pretty bad. Uh, over here, my ranger captain. I think I think he actually bounces. I don't think he did any damage this turn, um, which was which was kind of funny. I mean, he only has three attacks, but still. Um, so that's what it looks like at the end of Dwarves' turn two. Not terribly. Uh, Exciting. So, uh, Twilight Kin turn two. His um, Heralds of Woe move up, which was actually, I think, a mistake. Um, he didn't need to close this gap for any reason. He he could have just sat back and shot um, at my Rangers. I, I, I guess that's, yeah, he, he could have just sat back and shot. He didn't need to come up. Um, the Pegasus Lord, or the Pegasus Rider, disengages, flies over, and pivots. The... Um, the knights cross the river and pivot. The um, lord on a dragon um, goes into my um, bulwarkers. And you can see over here, the uh, one of the buccaneers' regiments could also um, reach the flank of my bulwarkers. And I said, well, that's, that's just going to have to happen. At least they're disordered. But it's not a good place if you're a bulwarker. And the uh, reaper guard charges the front of my ironclad. We move into shooting, and like I said, he shoots and does a point of damage. They're fine. Um, shooting on these rangers, and they're fine. Um, and then he gets like a lucky fireball or something off and actually does a couple damage to uh, this guy. But he's fine. So uh, we move into combat, and the Reaper Guard actually don't do that great. They had to tow into the river, so minus one, you know, on their modifier. And I am defense five, but they only do five points of damage, and these guys actually luckily hold. The ball workers, on the other hand, um, get pretty well demolished. Not expected. They route. And you can see the end of the turn like this. He, um, for a reform, he doesn't. Here, here's, where, here's where a big mistake came up from him. So if, if you go back here, you can see his ironclad aren't that far from his dragon. Or not my ironclad. My, my shield breakers are not that far from his dragon. So. If, if he sits still, he's within charge range. Now, he didn't measure it. He didn't look. And since this is the tournament game, I didn't say, hey, by the way, you probably shouldn't leave your dragon there. I left it. So, you can see here, my iron, my shield breakers have a clear charge. They can pivot and they can charge. So, just a little, little, little forewarning there. So, dwarves, turn three. 
shield breakers, um, the, the army standard bearer moved out of the way. The shield breakers made the charge into the dragon lord. My rangers uh, make the charge into the heralds of woe because he, he moved up. They're a little bit better in combat. They're also pathfinders, so charging through the river, no big deal. My ironclad, um, we'll go to the next screen so you can see this better. My ironclad um, countercharge the reaper guys. My uh, earth elemental goes into their flank. Uh, my or greater earth elemental. My earth elementals pick up the token. They move forward, and my rangers at the bottom are just starting to uh, move their way to the other token. Uh, mostly knowing that I don't need them in the middle anymore. Everyone's fine. So these rangers um, route their heralds, whoa, and reform. Uh, the ranger captain does like one damage or something. Nothing spectacular. Um, over here, uh, the combined charges um, route the reapers, which is pretty good. And um, these guys reform like this. And over here, um, I didn't roll great for dice, but I, I got lucky. Um, I did 11 points of damage to this this dragon, Dark Lord on a dragon, and he's a 1719. So you know, 11 points of damage is good, but it's not a, it's not a guarantee. But I rolled well twice, and he went down, and I reformed like such. So pretty lucky for me. Um, not terribly lucky for my opponent, obviously. Here's what it looks like after Dwarf turn three, Twilight can turn four. Or turn three, sorry. Twilight can he double charges my shield breakers with his Pegasus and his Dark Knights. Um, his Buccaneers there on the bridge charge my army standard bearer. Um, I don't remember what his Buccaneers did here. I I think they just sat still to shoot instead of charge, which is probably fine. I guess I don't know what else they would have done. They probably could have backed up. Uh, and over here, these guys charge um, him. So, uh, no, shooting was ineffectual. So, we move right into combat. And these guys finally route my ranger captain, which is, which is fine. He wasn't going to accomplish anything there. Um, these guys do a piddly one point of damage to old, old man army standard bear. And he survives. Um, over here, these guys do a combined 12 points of damage, which is, you know, it's okay. Uh, and then a, a reasonable dice roll gets him a waiver. So, not great, but at least they're still there. Uh, and the army standard bear had actually charged my uh, greater earth elemental um, and did a point of damage to him, which was funny because he needed a five to hit and a six to wound. So here's what the overview of Twilight Kin 3 looks like. Um, I'm still very confident at those top two tokens, the bottom token, um, I'm essentially just sending those rangers down there to uh, hopefully cover that. So turn four. Uh, turn four dwarves, we start with headstrong, and we make it, which is pretty big. So those dwarves go into the knights, counter charge the knights. Um, you see my rangers up there just kind of farting around on the left. Um, the greater earth elemental counter charges the, um, what's that called, that went into them. The, the army standard bear. You can see a better picture here. My ironclad charge those buccaneers in the river. And my earth elementals proper charge those buccaneers at the top. Um, shooting, I think the boomstick just, just plucks at this guy a little bit or else the rangers did. Um, over here, these guys, they did okay. And and um, since these buccaneers already had some damage on them, they were actually able to waver them, which is pretty good. Um, the Greater Earth Elemental does a, what he does, I guess. He, he smacked up that army standard bear good. Um, and on top of that, since he smacked up the army standard bear good, these guys were no longer inspired. And my shield breakers, not surprisingly, smack up those knights really well and reform like that. Uh, so... This is an overview, but it's not quite done because my opponent's like, hey, guess what? You have to fight over here still. I'm like, oh, yeah. So my Earth Elementals go, and they smack up on these Buccaneers, and they waver them, which was actually kind of a poor showing for them. They should have eaten these guys alive, but that's okay. So here's a more accurate overview. So again, again I'm, I'm pretty confident at this point. Got one token. I can easily get the second. I'm not concerned. 
I'm just mopping up. Um, so Twilight turn four. Um, he flies his Pegasus rider over there um, and smacks him into my um, stone stone priest. Yeah, you can see that here. Um, he moves his his uh, sorcerer at the top, just kind of dancing around, and on the bottom he uh, moves down with his dark riders or not dark riders. We're not playing Warhammer anymore. With his heralds of woe and grabs that token, which is you know pretty good. Uh, in the process, he shoots at these guys and just does the damage. Um, I think a fireball hits the earth elementals and whatever. Uh, this charge wasn't terribly eventful. He gets a point of damage on my stone priest, and he's fine. So the outcome after the end of Twilight turn four. Doors turn five. It's going to get nasty for the Twilight Kin. Um, you can see there's a double charge on those Buccaneers. They're toast. My Greater Earth Elemental is moving over to pick up that token. On the other side, um, just charges. Uh, my Stone Priest moves out of the way of of the uh, Pegasus Rider. He doesn't want anything to do with that. Um, yeah. So we go into shooting phase. And I'm actually able to waver this guy, which was pretty funny. Um, he hardly has ever had any damage on him. He's just... Um, let me see what's... I guess he's an 11-13. So I must have rolled like... Yeah, like an 8 or something. So he's wavered, which is phenomenal, because he's not going to do nothing. And my rangers over here... Um, these guys were already damaged from the ranger captain, so my rangers pick up these guys, no problem. In combat, we didn't even bother rolling this. I just didn't roll double ones, so they're gone. We reform like this. Um, up here, my elementals go back in, and um, they roll okay, but essentially I just waver these guys again, which is fine. It's not like I need those elementals to do something else. So, overview after dwarf turn five. Uh, Twilight kin turn five. Um, shooting, I didn't mark this this was just like a fireball at at my uh stone priest and that's about it um yeah well there's yeah there's just not a lot on the board that he can do anything with so dwarves turn six uh start with headstrong and make my headstrong which is always awesome um other movement um those rangers on the left are just moving back over so they can pew pew at the sorcerer my shield breakers are actually moving back um, I don't need them to get fireballed because attrition points do count. Because, yes, this is a loot scenario, but I don't want to give up, you know, 260 points or whatever they are with their magic item. I need to, you know, earn an extra point. I'm obviously going to win, but I want to win. And at this point, I'm wanting to win more. Um, my Greater Earth Elemental picks up that token. Um, and my Ironclad troop charge the rear of the Pegasus Rider, which you can see over here. Um, our earth elementals obviously go back into what they're doing. Uh, and my rangers uh, move towards that last token. for They don't have anything else to do. So, um, In a magic, I get a bane chant off um, on my ironclad. Because why not? Uh, in shooting, I get like a point of damage on the sorcerer. It's nothing special. Uh, in the combat, we start up here. Um, the earth elementals finally finished off that buccaneer unit. It was just an inevitability. They reform like this. Uh, my dwarf ironclad, yep, dwarf ironclad in the rear actually take out this Pegasus Rider. So, pretty good on them. On uh, the overview of what it looks like, we're just hanging out, spinning around, and there's what the board looks like over here. Uh, Twilight can turn six. Uh, fireballed my stone priest, but he's fine because he's inspired right now from the uh, flagger. And we actually rolled up a turn seven. It was obviously that I had won. But um, on a turn seven, I had a chance to kill that priest, this. So um, just some obviously looking. I'm, I'm moving around, moving around, um, adding in. <laughs> I told him at the bottom right there. You can see just to add insult to injury, I'm going to go pick up that last token. Um, not that it matters, but. So we go into some shooting and um, the boomstick and essentially the rangers on the top there are enough and we finish off the last of his units, the priestess. 
So that, those are mislabeled. This is turn seven. Yeah, Taurus turn seven. So um, that's what it looks like. Afterwards, we have all the tokens. We have everything of his off the board. Um, we've only lost the um, the bull workers and my ranger captain. So not surprisingly, as a result, it is a total dwarf victory. I have all three tokens. And um, via the scoring for this tournament, um, I get plus three points to my victory. So the victory points were 15 for a win, 10 for a draw, 5 for a loss, and 0 for a concede. So I won, so I got 15 points, but I got plus 3 because I won by such a, a large scale. So I ended up getting plus 18 points in the first game, which is good. Um, just general thoughts about, about the battle itself. Um, it was it was actually pretty fun to play Twilight Can. I had not seen them on the board yet. Um, so that was, that was interesting. Um, generally yeah my, my dwarves and my elementals did what they did especially the elementals you they they walked up and they just made mincemeat out of those elves there was nothing they could they could do in that case the the, the right answer for him would have been to just a, avoid them avoid my elementals as much as you can and try to just to kill off the dwarves and pick up because he did have two he did have two flying characters like at this point down in the, the mistakes I, my opponent was new or newest to the game, and that's and that's fine. And, and he had a good time afterwards, and he's and he's and he did said yes. I learned a lot from this game, and I was like, well, good, because you know I, I would have helped you out through the game if this wasn't a tournament. But he had two flyers. He he could have really used those flyers to um, a much better effect. Um, you know, like he he didn't have to get into combat with me like that. He probably could have sufficiently at least picked up one token for sure, and probably got another one without too much trouble using those flyers just to get around me and and to just generally be annoying so i mean and you know it, it was a fun game but uh, hopefully everyone learned something uh and 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 all the rest so i have two more two more battle reports for this this game this uh tournament and so i'll get those out probably today maybe tomorrow uh, but thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you next time